Hello, I'm Will Sampson from Woodworking Network at FDMC Magazine. And we're in the shop today to talk about finishing, specifically using waterborne finishes. In a particular product from, a family of products from Gemini. Um, but let me say right ahead, like a lot of woodworkers, I'm not really comfortable with finishing, even though I do a lot of it. Um, you know, it's chemistry, and I'm used to physically making things. And, you know, all that chemistry is not my natural ability. But I understand that when you finish a product, the finish is a huge percentage of the value as perceived by the customer. And the quickest way to ruin a great project is have a bad finish on it. So it's important to get it right. When it comes to water-based or waterborne finishes, I have not had a lot of success with them. Um, in my experience, most of them have been too blue. Uh, they color the wood in a weird way that I'm not used to. And more importantly, they raise the grain like crazy and add a lot of extra work in sanding to the process. And so when the folks at Gemini contacted me about their new uh, Evo Eclipse product, I was anxious to give it a try and see what a real professional grade modern waterborne finish could do and how it was different. And uh, the, uh, they shipped me this stuff uh, in late February, and I'm in Maine. And Good thing that the first thing that I did was read the product data sheets with this because one of the things about waterborne products is they're real subject to temperature, particularly cold temperatures. And in Maine in February, we have a lot of cold temperatures. So I made sure that none of this stuff froze. The folks at Gemini say it shouldn't be kept at anything below 60 degrees. And then I started figuring out a strategy for how I wanted to use these once uh, I got a temperature situation that was better. Now, again, when you look at the data sheets, they, they have a lot of things that say things like, like air drying at 78 degrees and relative humidity of 50%. Well, that doesn't exist in Maine very often. So we want to professional product that we can use over a wide variety and I understand that this can be used in a wider range of, of uh, circumstances and so some of that is what I wanted to test. But also one of the things that I was intrigued with, I mean our, my original plans were I was going to use HVLP and conventional spraying equipment and, and try spraying it and then in the uh, the product data sheet one of the things that really intrigued me was that they have instructions that you can brush or roll uh, the product um, with a high quality synthetic bristle brush, brush or a uh, shed resistant quarter nap quarter inch nap mini roller so oh I gotta try that 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 should be interesting as the first test but let's talk a little bit about what they sent me and what we're going to be looking at. Um, there is a sanding sealer, clear sanding sealer. Um, there is a clear top coat. There is a hardener that is optional, that you can use it as a two-part product with a hardener that has some, some benefits in some applications. On the paint side, uh, they sent me a uh, primer, white primer, and a uh, white top coat. And uh, we'll try those out too. But for right now, I just want to show you what we found in our initial test. And probably the first thing we should do is, is show you the same things that I found out in first impressions. Let's open up the... Uh, sanding sealer and 
Now, the first thing I noticed, and I hope that I'll move this board out of the way, I hope you can see it on the video, is the product is not blue. <laughs> um, it's kind of a creamy color, and it's fairly thick, but not exceptionally so. But it's it's definitely a a kind of a warm cream color. And then so the first thing that I did is I got some oak plywood. Plywood in my experience, most of it rotary cut veneer, so that it really exposes grain. And I've had really nasty grain raising problems with water base using plywood. And so, you know, I figured I'm going to do some doors and drawer fronts uh, for my kitchen. And those are mostly going to have uh, plywood center uh, panels. And so I wanted to see how that was going to work. And um, so I followed the instructions. Uh, I was working... Uh, at about uh, 65 degrees with uh, about 70% uh, humidity and uh, that's within the range that they allow um, and uh, uh, was pleasantly surprised at how it went on. I, I took my brush, brush brushed, it on, brushed on the uh, sanding sealer and did see some grain rays, which I expected. Then following the instructions, I started with, uh, um, oh, they said to pre prepare the, the uh, surface with uh, 180 grit sanding, which I did. And then I used uh, 240 to, on a, with a wood block to uh, get rid of the uh, grain rays that I did encounter and, and a few little nibs and that sort of thing. It was really easy to sand. Um, only had to wait about 45 minutes before I could sand it. Um, just air drying, no special force drying attempt or anything like that. Um, and uh, then uh, uh, went on from there to the top coat. And Let's compare the top coat. The other thing you notice, which you can't get in the video, is the smell. I mean, this is one of the advantages of uh, water-based products uh, is low of a VOC and, and not you know any of the toxic chemical smells that you get from uh, some of the uh, solvent-based products. So now, again, let me move this out of the way temporarily so you can see it. Uh, this is the top coat product. It is a clear top coat. It's not blue. It's, it's more of a white cream. And boy, is it thick. When I get around to doing my HVLP, I'm sure that I'm going to have to thin this. And there were some instructions from Gemini about uh, uh, what tips to use, and I will follow those. That's something that, you know, all of a lot of us don't like to take the time to read the instructions. But particularly with finished products, it's really essential. You know, the, the manufacturers, they want you to succeed. They're not going to tell you something that isn't a good procedure to get great results. And so it's best to at least start with following their instructions. And, you know, then maybe your experience will dictate a different path afterwards. But start with their instructions. Then, um, and they had instructions too about how thick to apply it. Um, I have this handy gadget for uh, measuring uh, uh, film thickness, which uh, uh, definitely is going to be very helpful when I start using spray finish on here. So then I applied the top coat. Now they recommend using one sealer coat and one or two 
top coat coats. So I use two of the top coat and sanding between the coats. Um, so I, I put on the top coat. I was really excited to see no extra grain raising. That was really excellent. Uh, again, you know, the, took uh, 320 grit sandpaper and gave it a, a basically a scuff sand. Um, and then uh, uh, applied the second coat, the final coat. Again, I'm getting about 45 minutes to drying, uh, just leaving this flat in, in my sh shop situation. No special heat or anything like that. And boy, I was really pleased with the results. Now, I've not done anything with this surface after uh, that second coat dried and um, uh, I don't know if you can see in the lights now the sheen this, these products are available in about five different sheens and this is sort of the middle sheen this is called dull um, which is a little more matte than a satin they have a full gloss and a satin and a dull and then uh, uh, flat and I forget what the, what the next one is called but um, at any rate this is a dull sheen. I really like it. It looks like it's just a hand rub finish. It's really nice. And it there was no grain raising despite all this exposed growth rings here. Um, it really was a pleasure to use. Uh, and again, like I'm sitting here with these two big open cans right now and I'm hardly smelling anything. Uh, just a little bit. Um, so there was no toxic fumes. Uh, it doesn't have uh, haps or formaldehyde or phthalate uh, uh, in it. So it's none of the toxic stuff that you don't want to mess with. Um, and uh, certainly is a great environmentally responsible alternative to solvent-based finishes. And I think in a professional use, uh, should be a great alternative. Now we're going to go and move, you know, obviously most pros are not going to use a brush to put this on. And so we're going to go with, you know, HVLP in a spray booth and see what we can get. I've got, as I said, a bunch of cabinet doors and drawer fronts that need to be done. And so we're going to try uh, finishing it both uh, horizontally and vertically to see how that works. Um, I personally am a fan of vertical finishing and we can talk about that on another day. But uh, uh, we're also going to try the hardener and see what that does and then we'll try the uh, colored paint too uh, and see what that does. So we're going to have several more reviews uh, as we use these Gemini products over the next uh, uh, couple of weeks and maybe a couple months uh, but so far my initial reaction is very uh, positive and uh, you know if you're uh, uh, looking to learn more about these products uh, you can go to gemini-coatings.com uh, and learn more uh, this is again you, coatings are really complex and I can't go into every single detail and I'm not an expert on every single detail. Um, I, I strongly urge you to rely on your representative from your coating company whenever you're dealing with finishing products and uh, uh, I've been pleased with the information that I've gotten from the folks at Gemini and I'm sure I'm going to have some more questions and I'll be asking them some more things uh, going forward as I do these tests. But uh, uh, I think it's uh, a great product to take a look at. Well, that's what we've got for today. If you uh, want to see more product reviews and tool reviews and, and uh, the latest woodworking industry news, go to woodworkingnetwork.com or look in the pages of FDMC Magazine. Thanks for watching.